Alright, uh, what we're going to be demoing is just how to make salt and pepper shakers out of these. Uh, I picked up the idea of doing just mushrooms for the sale off of uh, a YouTube channel called uh, Worth the Effort. And he was making them out of one piece of wood and they were just mushrooms. And the problem with it is, is the way that he was making them is that when you're undercutting the, the cap of the mushroom, it's pretty difficult to do because of where the uh, headstock is. And uh, because one of the tricks of doing this to get a fairly even edge and you're going at different distances, different radii from the center of the cap, is you have to get these two cuts parallel. And that's actually quite difficult to do when you're undercutting with, with the headstock right there. So I decided I'd go ahead and make them in two pieces. So I made a few of these mushrooms just as a stem and a cap and put them together. And then it dawned on me all we have to do is uh, do them in two pieces and hollow them out. Drill a couple holes in the top and you got salt and pepper shakers. Uh, so anyway, you take a... You know, you make them natural edged, and if you take a piece of wood, it's got curves in it and whatnot, it off centers and all, all that. And I tried to do a, a cheat where I made a whole bunch of them out of one thing by parting them off. And the problem is, is that they all came out too flat, they're too uniform, and they don't look really very natural. Uh, the other thing that I was doing that was wrong is I was making the stems all exactly the same length. And if you just take... Uh, arbitrary pieces of wood and make them different lengths when you have a salt and pepper sh sitting next to each other if they're slightly different. It turns out it looks better, it looks more natural. So uh, the other one is, is that Jim Bob suggested that you burn the bottom of the, of the cap and it makes it look more natural. But uh, unfortunately this is a really dry sycamore and it's it squirts too deep before it black and it just it, it's okay and I'll use them but it's not really really nice. The next thing I did was uh, I don't know if you saw them but I had them in the last newsletter I believe no they, they didn't show up uh, I started trying to make a whole bunch of them out of these and they come out too flat I mean that's it still looks like a mushroom, but they don't, they're just not that good. So I learned that you go ahead and make these out of longer, you cut your blanks a little bit longer. You're just using junk wood. Who cares? It's like Lyle says, it grows on trees. The thing that you actually have to select more carefully is the stems. They can't be cracked because they're going to be hollowed out and the walls are going to be fairly thin and if you if you don't get a fairly good dry piece of wood, it's it's going to leak salt and pepper and whatnot. But uh, that's that's the harder and more careful selection you have is to get the stems that are good sound pieces of wood. So I'm going to start out by making a cap. So I'm going to make a tenon.
This is a piece of cedar. It doesn't make any difference. You could use anything. Anything. I mean, this is most of what I've made it out of is just this. Catcher's mitt? Yes. <laughs> I got it. I'm going to get it down to about a quarter of an inch. Okay, you take two Forrester bits that are an eighth of an inch apart. You can do them with five eighths and three quarters, or three quarters and five eighths, or whatever. And, uh, you're going to bore this out with the one slightly the bigger one, right? But I ain't going to do that yet. But I, that's what I was pointing out is you have to get these two. And the reason why is uh, that way you have if this outside diameter is an eighth bigger than you get a sixteenth inch wall thickness, and it works out really well, right? And again, use one that's a, a little bit longer than you think you're going to need because these are just too flat. They just don't look good. And just for safety's sake, Okay, the trick to doing these things again is to make these two cuts as parallel as possible. That way you get a nice even thickness regardless of how offset this can be. Otherwise you get one, it it's varies the thickness around the edge and it doesn't look like natural, like a mushroom does. Ooh, it's got a big crack. Oh well. This is going to be looking kind of iffy.
Yeah, another basic good habit to do is do your basic turning to make sure it clears. Yep. Yeah, it's not too bad. This is very forgiving. You can leave them there. Who cares? I might have to end up doing this over and over again. Okay. No, I'll just keep going. Yeah, that's it. I haven't done one of these out of cedar before. But it smells good. Yep. Uh, now, if you notice, you see how thin this edge is and how thick it is here. That's what that's what I was meaning by you need to make those two curves very parallel. I usually about a bedan's width. Three yeah, Three uh, you know it, it's not it's not exact. It's just all you're all you're doing is having a friction fit where somebody could pull it off and put salt in it or whatnot. You know.
So if you do this reasonably well, right? Okay, when I'm parting this off, I'm trying to get this to where it's just a very minimal nub with a nice curb where all we have to do is sand on it. Because the only way that you can hold on to this What he's doing is using the skew long point down. Yeah, and the reason why is just to minimize how big that nub is, because the only way you could hold on to this now, after you do that, the only way you could chuck up is I made a custom thing out of a piece of dowel with a number two Morse taper on it that you plug right into the tailstock, but it doesn't hold real well. So you're just trying to minimize the torque that you're going to have to finish this off. So you do as much of it as you can while it's on. Even even while you're actually just parting it off. Oh, and that's kind of rough. I mean, it's not sanded or anything, but uh, let's see if I can find that other grasshopper. But again, that what I did for the chuck. To hold that to sand them and, and to finish the top is just a piece of dowel. It's got a number two Morse taper where you just plug it directly into the tailstock. And then I uh, split it down the middle with a saw. I put a couple of bands of uh, uh, bailing wire around it to keep from splitting. And then I stuck a screw down inside of the, of the split so that when it goes into that that uh, hole in the bottom so that that those two fingers on that chuck you force them apart with the screw and as the wood gets softer it spins a little bit you just put the screw in farther and it opens it up farther but you have it tied together together behind it with a piece of baling water to keep it from splitting and it seems to work fairly well yeah you don't want them to look identical that's a, that's the biggest mistake I did at the start was was to uh, Make them all the roughly same size and everything, and that's you know you don't really want that.
turn the tenon on it. It might be holly. It's it's it like holly. yeah. It's awfully white. Slow your lead down when you turn it when you're boring. Okay. If you want to cheat, this is only five eighths of an inch. Except it's really dull. <laughs> we need to sharpen that puppy. Someone asked, can you sharpen those bits? We can't sharpen them, they're gone. Bring all your dull ones over to us. <laughs> we'll throw them away for you or take them to Jarvis or something else. Uh, you used to use one of those diamond, diamond cards. Oh, we just diamond cards. <laughs> so I basically bore this thing's full length. I mean, as deep as I can go, just so it holds more salt and pepper, you don't have to mess with it. Go to a cone center that's, that forces it to be on the center so that when you cut uh, that surface, it's perfectly concentric. Uh, also, something that I messed up, I just sawed that off. What you really got to do is face that off to make sure that that is perfectly square and it sits perfectly square on the cone center. But that was pretty close, so I'm, I'm not worried about it. And when you're doing these, I try to do this to where it has at least some natural surface. You know, I found that you, what you really should look for is about one third, either one third finished and one third natural, or two thirds natural and one third finished. If you do it half and half, it just, aesthetically, it's just not as nice. So...
Okay, when you're using a skew, always lift up your uh, tool rest a little bit, or otherwise Jim Bob will come over and make fun of you. Uh, this one oil. Well. Yeah, I'm rushing. Pardon? And the last thing is use your thin parting tool. Do you fit the cap to the uh, I ought to be doing it right now. What I do is either take a pair of calipers or a three quarter inch wrench. In fact I ought to do that right now as you're saying it. Okay, what I did was I made that just a tiny bit too narrow, and all you do is cut it back a little bit farther. Since you already got it in a, uh, a, a chuck, a scroll chuck, all you have to do is I take a use of the dam. That's pretty good.
Okay, you come in and you do this at a slight angle so that you, you come out with your foot built in. Sand the nub off. There you go. Not a real pretty one, but you get the idea. Oh. I mean, I think that's cool, personally.